to the Critical Hour on Radio Sputnik. I'm Wilmer Leon, joined here by my co-host, Garland Nixon. Thank you, Wilmer. Romanian ambassador to Kenya recalled for referring to African diplomats as monkeys. Romania has recalled its ambassador to Kenya, Dragos Vorel Tigau, following remarks he made during discussions with the Eastern European group of diplomats. For insight into this, we turn to our next guest. He holds the John Jay and Rebecca Moore's Chair of History and African American Studies at the University of Houston. He's one of the most prolific writers of our time. His latest book is entitled Revolting Capital, Racism and Radicalism in Washington, D.C., 1900 to 2000. Dr. Gerald Horn, as always, welcome back. Thank you for inviting me. You know, I guess this uh, may fall into uh, progress does not always mean progressive. Uh, this is this is interesting to me, especially in the context of last April when Black Peace Corps volunteers who have applied were warned to be prepared to be called the N-word and face other racist behavior while in Ukraine. Th- that was according to the Peace Corps website. And then you've got... Um, the racist metaphor with which Israel's foreign prime minister, the Lithuanian-born Ehud Barak, uh, posted in 2002 when he described Israel as a villa in the jungle. Then you've got European Union Joseph Burrell declaring the year that Europe is a garden and they've built it and it's going to be. I mean, these racist tropes for as much progress as we think we're making in the world, or maybe not, Dr. Gerald Horn. Progress doesn't equate to progressives. And then, of course, there is the question as to whether or not progress is being made. Exactly. I think we need to step back and look at this from 30,000 feet. And I think that we'll recognize that this incident involving a Romanian diplomat is suggestive and indicative of a wider structural change. What I mean is that the previous regime not only in Romania, but in many of the Eastern European countries generally, these were regimes that were ruled by communist parties. Uh, These were regimes, for example, that held Paul Robeson dear. Paul Robeson, of course, for those who may not be be aware, was the great uh, black American uh, singer, actor, activist, and socialist who was very close to communist parties worldwide. But with the Copernican changes post-1989 swept into power were these pro-capitalist regimes, for example, in Bucharest, Romania, and they have chosen to reverse many of the policies of the previous regime. So if the previous regimes were sympathetic to Robeson and black Americans struggle against racism because it was seen as indicative of the decay and decadence of capitalism generally, well, they take the opposing point of view. And in fact, I think your audience needs to recognize that historically in the United States, there has been an effort to export anti-blackness abroad. For example, in my book on Cuba, I talk about how U.S. tourists in France oftentimes objected to the presence in hotels in France of darker-skinned Cubans. They thought that this was some violation of human rights. If you look at the history of San Diego, California, just across the border from Mexican soil, uh, you'll find uh, lengthy stories about how U.S. tourists from Southern California going into Mexico objecting to the fact that Mexico was treating Black Americans uh, equally uh, on their soil and insisting that this could not stand and putting pressure on Mexico to reverse it. And so we need to recognize that there is a price to be paid for tailing after U.S. foreign policy. And I say this in particular to our black brothers and sisters, uh, many of whom are either unclear or even worse, uh, taking a wrongheaded position on the crisis in Ukraine, because if the latter wishes come true, uh, you can expect (laughs) to be treated rather shabbily, to use a euphemism, if for some reason you show up in that country. And I think that that is the ultimate lesson we should take away 
from this incident involving this Romanian diplomat. And I would hope that the African Union would weigh in, that is to say the uh, Pan-African transcontinental body of four dozen plus African states, because this cannot stand. We, we will not tolerate uh, this kind of nonsense. Uh, I think it might even be appropriate to break diplomatic relations with Romania as an abject and object lesson to any other Eastern European diplomats who might want to act in a similar fashion. And there's another wrinkle to this story as well that I should mention, which is that uh, Southern and Eastern Europe generally are treated as if they're the N-words of whiteness, for example. Their whiteness credentials are oftentimes challenged. And you see that in the history of Italian Americans, for example. You may recall that in the 1890s, you had lynchings of Italian Americans in New Orleans. And that almost led to a military confrontation uh, between a rising Italy and the United States of America. But ironically, instead of perhaps uh, instilling the notion of solidarity in some of the folks in Southern and Eastern Europe, uh, they feel that they have to bend over backwards to exhibit white supremacy so that they can qualify for entrance into the hollowed halls of whiteness. But once again, the way we need to deal with this is to lay heavy manners on these miscreants, as they say in the Caribbean. Uh, we should break diplomatic relations with them. Uh, we should take them to court. And we should use even more stern measures than I'm allowed to mention on these airwaves. Countries that practice slavery or colonization have no lesson to teach, according to Mali's foreign minister. Adoyap Diop said, Mali does not want human rights to be instrumentalized or politicized as they are not the prerogative of any country or civilization. It is astonishing that certain countries that practice slavery or colonization are today the ones giving lessons to others on human rights. uh, Adule Diop declared during the celebration of Russia Day. Your thoughts? Well, obviously, the the point needs to be considered and contemplated very seriously. And once again, I think it bespeaks the ideological regression in black America and also the price to be paid when you tail after Uncle Sam. Uh, The United States would like you to believe that the rule of Joseph Stalin in Moscow from the 1920s until his death in 1953, totally discredited the Soviet Union, totally discredited socialism, et cetera. And you have many black Americans who go along with that, but they don't turn the coin over and say, well, okay, hundreds of years of the African slave trade, hundreds of years of mass enslavement, hundreds of years of genocide, uh, hundreds of years of genocide, not only against Africans, but the indigenous of the Americas, Uh, Should not that, if we're going to uh, have any kind of consistency, uh, discredit the North Atlantic countries that profited so handsomely from these outrages? Uh, Shouldn't that discredit capitalism itself, for example? Uh, Shouldn't that cause us to redouble our efforts to see these North Atlantic countries as the epitome of both hubris and hypocrisy, amongst other flaws? But somehow, because of a a kind of accommodationism uh, to capitalism and imperialism uh, that would make Booker T. Washington, the late black American leader of the early 20th century who pioneered an accommodationism, it would make him blush, the kind of accommodationism that you see today that's widespread and is doing little more than preparing a very thorny and difficult road for our grandchildren, if not for ourselves. It's also very telling that Diop, standing there with uh, Sergei Lavrov, is talking about human rights. And it's the United States that claims to be and always tries to uh, hold itself out as the as the champion uh, of human rights. And, uh, and Diop is... 
using the example of of Palestine, and he's talking about Ukraine, and he's talking about Latin America. So he's basically, again, standing there with the the Russian foreign uh, minister, Sergei Lavrov, chastising the United States and very clearly holding it out for the hypocrite that it is. Well, the United States is the clearest example of that metaphor we often hear about the thief in the marketplace uh, grabbing a basket of fruit or vegetables and then to throw off the pursuing authorities, yell, stop thief! Uh, The United States, in other words, is trying to throw dust in the eyes of the international community by pointing the finger of accusation at countries too numerous to mention without recognizing, I assume, that when they're pointing that index finger at others, there are three fingers pointing back at themselves. And it's well past time to point this out as the Malian diplomat is doing because this crisis that we're enduring right now is really spiraling out of control. We see the United States trying to ratchet up tensions with Cuba, uh, charging that uh, there is an illicit Chinese military base uh, on the island of freedom. We see the United States trying to ratchet up tensions with Serbia over Kosovo. We see the United States seeking to ratchet up tensions with Iran, uh, confiscating an Iranian tanker, oil tanker, off the coast of Texas, charging that Iran is solidifying and fortifying military relationships with Moscow to the detriment of the U.S. ally, that is Ukraine, shipping military material, we are told, across the Caspian Sea. And then, of course, there's the big enchilada, the People's Republic of China, with U.S. planes buzzing, uh, Chinese planes with provocative headlines appearing in the New York Times as early as today, talking about how the Chinese Coast Guard is the equivalent of other nations and navies. And that the Chinese Coast Guard, we are told, is engaging in outrageous behavior, we are told. So, obviously, Uncle Sam is engaged in a riverboat gamble, throwing the dice, seeking to maintain its deteriorating hegemony by any means necessary. But we should, of course, cool the hotheads in Washington by putting them in their place. Uh, Lastly, People's Dispatch. U.S. tells another bedtime story to scare away normal relations with China and uh, Cuba, addressing allegations of the Chinese spy base in Cuba. Dr. Horn. Well, that's the story I was just referring to. I mean, question number one, point number one, is that Cuba denies that that story is accurate. But point number two is that Cuba has the sovereign right to invite China to establish a facility on the island of freedom. This reminds me of the October crisis of 1962, where the United States charged the then Soviet Union with putting defensive missiles uh, on the island of freedom at the same time. The United States had missiles in Turkey uh, aimed at Moscow, aimed at Leningrad, now St. Petersburg. So somebody needs to grab the so-called diplomats in Foggy Bottom at the State Department by the column and apprise them of today's reality. That being with de-dollarization, with the deteriorating hegemony of U.S. imperialism, the world is unable to tolerate these double standards whereby the United States can have hundreds of military bases all around the world where the United States can eavesdrop on China from the rebel province of Taiwan, not to mention from Guam and South Korea and Japan, uh, but China somehow cannot have fraternal relations with a friendly regime in Havana. Uh, This simply will not do. Dr. Gerald Horn, as always, thank you so much for your time. Greatly, greatly appreciate that analysis, and we look forward to having you back. Thank you.